Oh, hi there. <laughs> How you doing? I always wanted to do that. Welcome back, folks. This is Shane. In today's video, I'm going to showcase my guitar collection. Now, I'm going to do this with a slight twist. These will be the guitars I've actually purchased and I'm invested in. Some of these I purchased locally here in Melbourne, Australia, and at least one of them, from memory, was purchased in San Francisco. So I'm going to showcase those on this video. Being a YouTuber and doing what I do, I'm sometimes fortunate enough to have guitar companies send stuff out that I'm allowed to keep. I'm gonna leave all of those guitars out of this video. Every time I'm thinking about buying a guitar, I ask myself this very question. I know this is a bit uncommon, but the question I always ask myself is, will it fit in the cupboard over here? And if the answer is no, then I have to sell something off. I don't want more guitars than what can fit in this cupboard. So I think all up, there's probably about 10 or 11. There was a time where there were always a couple out on the floor and I hate that. I always like putting things away and I only ever want to have the guitars that I tend on wanting to keep long term. Otherwise, what's the point? If they're sitting around collecting dust, it's a waste. So probably start today actually with the oldest guitar first and then we'll get into some of the new stuff. So the first guitar on this list is one I'm never selling. This is my Fender 52 reissue Telecaster. You've seen it a million times on the channel, no doubt, if you've been subscribed for a long time, with the Danny Gatton pickups. Now, these Joe Biden pickups, not Biden, but Biden pickups, sound killer. Now, there's a few other mods that I've made to this out of necessity, right? I don't mod guitars unless something needs changing, and one of those things that needed changing were the frets. It had those painted on vintage frets that I wore out in about three or four years, or not even. I just melted through them and ended up getting 6105 stainless steel frets put in here. It was the best upgrade I could ever make to this because now it's going to last forever without needing new frets. So I love that. This guitar was the first left-handed Telecaster I ever played that had a really big fat neck like this. And this isn't the fattest neck guitar I've got, but at the time I'd never played anything like it. The best thing about this, the day that I purchased it, I got to play it in San Francisco with a lot of the locals and it was awesome. So yeah, it was just a great decision to get this. And at the time, the Australian dollar was actually pretty strong against the US dollar back in 2010. So it's just, it was a great time to buy it. And over the years, you know, I put the new pickups in, also replaced the, uh, the input jack because they're garbage on most Telecasters. But this guitar, man, it has been all around Melbourne. It's been overseas and it's been on a million different videos and I'm never selling this thing. If I have to keep one guitar, this would be high on my list of guitars to keep. Up next, I've got my Tokai Love Rock electric guitar. This is made in Japan and I've had this longer than I thought. I just looked at the receipt and it was 2016 I got this. Wow, I can't believe it. Now, recently I had some mods done to this as well. I got new wiring put in and a high pass filter as well. And the high pass filters made a world of difference. So when I turn down now, it stays nice and clean and clear. This has been a fixture on the channel and I haven't found a left-handed Les Paul that I can afford, right? I have played a few great ones, but I haven't played any around this price point that I think is a better guitar than this. Especially now after the high pass filter was put in, it really made the pickup sing, especially on the neck pickup. So this is fantastic. You know, when I purchased this, I had a Gibson VOS Custom Shop Gold Top with P90 pickups, and that was absolutely beautiful. It was worth about two and a half times more than this. And in a blindfold test, not, not about the tone, but just in terms of how it felt to play with the neck shape, they were indistinguishable from each other. A question I always have come in is, do I still rate Tokai guitars? I do. But if you're going to be buying one, get one made in Japan over the made in China ones. I really feel like the Epiphone guitars today are better than the Tokai made in China. So yeah, just food for thought there. Clearly this is a dual humbucker electric guitar, but one of the things that sold me on this was the big fat 50s profile neck. Now you'll either like that or you won't. And if you've been subscribed for a long time, you know I love the big fat necks on any guitar I can get my hands on, on the most part, right? I just like how it feels for me. Now, if we take a look at the back of the headstock, you can see it says made in Japan. Now, a while back, I had an ES-335 style electric from Tokai as well. I actually sold that to a lovely guy here in Melbourne. If you watch this, mate, I hope you're still enjoying the guitar. It sat in my cupboard for so long, and I thought, I still prefer playing a Les Paul, especially live, right? So playing at home, you can play anything you like, but when I get out and play live, I much prefer a solid body guitar. You just get more out of it at any volume and with any gain level. So, for me, this was an absolute no-brainer, and it comes in one of the best guitar cases of all time. Up next, we have my least expensive guitar in the collection, or at least I think it is. 
This is my PRS SE Custom 24. This is the made in Korea version. This was the first year PRS ever made a lefty and I was so excited to get my hands on one of these because I never had a chance to play one prior. Now, there's a few mods that I've made to this, but the main one is the pickup swap. They now got Missing Link Audio Peacock Humbucker pickups, which are inspired by Dwayne Allman. I made a full review of that. If you missed it, I'll link it up here. Now, these pickups were sent out to the channel for review. I also kept the original pickups because I liked them so much. And, you know, I think I'm just going to leave these in here now because they, these sound great and they're very unique too, very different to the original. But the original pickup sounds so good, it's probably not worth doing a mod unless you really want a different sound. With that in mind though, I also pulled out the push-pull pot and replaced it with a standard volume and tone control because uh, split coil tones suck. <laughs> I don't like them at all. I'd rather play a Strat if I want those kind of tones. And there's something inherently slightly brighter about a PRS. So this was unlike a lot of guitars I wanted to buy at the time. You know, it, the color, I've never bought a green guitar before. And you'll either like this Trampus Green or you won't. I actually came to really love the color of it. It's got 24 frets, but it's one of the easiest guitars to play up high on the fretboard over any of my others, other, with the exception of one, which we'll get to in a moment. But this is just the most easy guitar in my collection to play. It's nice and light, which means it gets a lot of use at gigs. And when the day comes, I need to replace the frets, which it doesn't look like it needs to happen yet. I'm going to get 6105 stainless steel frets put in here because this is a guitar I want to keep long term. You know, I've toyed with the idea of buying a made in the USA PRSSE, but this now is just so great. It's just such a great guitar. I feel like I'd only be doing it because I could, you know, not because I actually need it. And this guitar does everything I need. Now, interestingly enough, unlike most of the other guitars in the collection, this has a wide thin neck, which is something I would not normally go for. But on this PRS, it works, man. There's something to be said about modern engineering on a guitar. I thought it was sort of a bit you know, a bit of BS or whatever, but this plays far better than every guitar in my collection, just in terms of giving you no fight. And I can't play fast or anything like that, but in the hand, this is really easy to play. All right, we're almost there. We're almost, well, probably at the halfway mark or so. Say so this is the next one from memory. All right, if you ever want a guitar that you can't fit in the back seat of your car, <laughs> buy a Gibson Flying V. Man, this thing, this thing was just amazing. You know, I owned a Flying V many years ago. I never did a review of it or anything, but I think it was back before I started really doing YouTube stuff. But this just, oh, this is so good. I'll tell you all the great stuff about this that I love, starting with the pickups. These are the best humbucker pickups I've ever owned. Burst buckers. If you ever get a Gibson or you want great third-party humbuckers, get the Gibson burst buckers. They sound amazing. They've got lots of top end. They just handle as much gain as you want to throw at them. And this guitar is so light. And like I said before with the PRS, you can get up high on this guitar and just play and play and play. So if that's important to you, this is great. I'm a huge Albert King fan and Michael Burks and both of those guys obviously made the Flying V sing. I love its simplistic controls, two volume controls and a single tone control. And this just looks so cool, man. There's something about a Flying V when people see it at a gig or at a jam night, they're like, what the hell is this thing? So yeah, just, and interestingly enough, the neck's kind of chunky, but not that chunky. It does feel different to like a Les Paul. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with that, but tuning reliability on a Flying V is fantastic. I don't have the same inherent issues I've met with some Les Pauls out there, probably because, I don't know, maybe the angle of the, the headstock's different. I'm sure someone who knows specs can tell me that, but just as a straight up plug and play guitar, I think this might be my best sounding. It really does sound great. All right, here we go. This is the only guitar that's kind of like a double up in my entire guitar lineup. And I'm going to explain why I purchased this. You've probably seen this a million times, but this is my American original 50s Telecaster. I've had this almost two years. Uh, it'll be two years, I think, in December. So I guess not quite two years, but it's getting closer. And man, what a beautiful instrument. Straight out of the box, this Fender American Original 50s Telecaster is the best current production model tally I've ever played. Now, the American Professional 2s are really quite great as well. This just has a little bit more of that vintage vibe going on, being that it's a 50s style tally, right? So you get some modern appointments with the new guitars and they're fantastic, but as you saw before, I'm a huge fan of my 52. So 
this was a no-brainer. One of the things that really sold me on it again was the neck profile. It's just super fat. This is the fattest neck fender make. I've never found one in a lefty other than another custom shop one I found years ago that was like seven grand, right? This is basically like a custom shop guitar without that price tag. I've said that a number of times because it's true. It really is. You know how many mods I've made to this? None. <laughs> it's great straight out of the box. I did have one of the tone control, oh, the volume control replaced recently, but that's it. The pickups on this guitar were far better than the 52 American one that I showed you earlier, just straight out of the box. This sounded amazing. So yeah, just better pickups, uh, a better feeling neck, larger frets. It did all the things that I wanted it to do as a traditional Telecaster. I've always got my other one that I'll fall back to if I need you know, something that can handle higher gain or if a venue ever has a lot of buzz and issues like that. But this Telecaster is great. The only small downside to this Telecaster is that it's really quite heavy and uh, it's got a dead bug on the back of it. There we go, nice. Um, but with that aside, the weight aside, it actually is a really beautiful tally. So I can highly recommend these. Fender are still making them, but they're making them very, very slowly for whatever reason right now. This is the one that I actually put a hole in a long time ago, right after I purchased it. If you missed that, I'll link it up in the cards and you can take a look, but great guitar. And uh, yeah, what can I tell you? If you're looking for a great sort of 50 style Telecaster with the biggest neck you can find, these are super cool. Oh, we're cutting it fine now. We've only got two left. And this was the next one. Whew. One of the traps I always face when I borrow stuff from Sky Music or if I get something on loan is I always think to myself, maybe I should buy it, maybe I should buy it. But I've learned how to sort of curb that and deal with it over the years. Rick always said, you get that feeling, have a cold shower or sleep on it and you're generally good to go. This was another guitar, much like the PRS, that I knew as soon as I got it home, I was in serious trouble. The PRS, I actually bought the next day. I took it back and then the following day I went back and bought it. This got to my house, I opened it up without having any expectations of it. And I said, man, I'm screwed. I need this guitar. This is one of those instant uh, love affairs or whatever you want to call it, right? So this is my Gibson Les Paul Studio with two P90 pickups. And it's oh, a special, sorry, not studio. What am I talking about? It's a special with two P90 pickups in TV yellow. And have a look at this. This ticks all the boxes for me. It's actually lighter than the Tokai. It's the only guitar in the collection with P90 pickups as well, making it uh, very different to all of the others. And this TV yellow, I think looks beautiful. Now, a lot of people have said, oh, is the TV yellow sort of transparent? You can see some sort of uh, breath on there right now, but yeah, it is. So you can kind of see the wood grain through it. It looks really, really legit. Um, just a beautiful look in my opinion, but it's not just about the look. It's nice and light. It's got a nice big fat 50s neck, that reoccurring theme. And this, I've had no mods done to it. I picked this up straight out of the case and I knew I wanted to buy it. Now, interestingly enough, I didn't even realize when I purchased it, it didn't have a tunematic bridge until afterwards. I was like, oh yeah, it's just got, you know, the, the hard tailpiece thing going on down here. So yeah, that didn't bother me whatsoever. I just thought, what a great guitar. It was only later that I realized when I was looking up the specs, it's like, oh yeah, okay. So I guess I must've overlooked that based on its playability and performance. And, yeah, I just love how the whole thing is yellow. Now, I know this color is not for everybody, but again, I had no expectations for this guitar and it's become one of my favorites. Ah, oh, look at that sad little tweed case. It's all alone. This is the, the most recent purchase. Now, when I purchased this guitar, I said on the video title, my last Stratocaster. I still feel like that with this. And this is my only Stratocaster. So if you've seen others on the channel pop up and come and go, this is the only one I've still got. And much like that Telecaster I just showed you before, the American original, this is the Stratocaster from the same series. Man, I love this. I love opening this case and looking at it. Better than that though, I love playing it. It's a guitar that I've been waiting for when it comes to strats. Now I've owned a lot of strats over the years and none of them have been as good as this straight out of the box. One of the made in Mexico ones was very close to this, but visually it is beautiful. Playability wise, it's great. It has, the tremolo arm that allows you to still close the case because it's angled. I really like that. But better than that, it has the same big neck you've seen on some of my other guitars. It's a 50 style soft V. It's not a, one of those U-shaped necks like on the telly, but it's still got a bit of chunk to it without being too excessive. And 
this is the strat I've been waiting to find. Now, it's weird, you know, I used to not like white strats at all when I was probably 20 years ago when I first started playing, but over the years I've come to really love this color. I think it just looks really classy. You know, Hendrix, Jimmy Vaughan, Clapton, all those guys have played great white Stratocasters and this is easily the best. And I mean, look at the neck up close. It's just super beautiful. And one of my favorite things on any guitar, vintage style tuners. <laughs> it's always great seeing what people think of them in the comment section, so let me know. But the pickups on this, I'll never need to change. I've done no mods to this. If I ever wear the frets down, it's getting stainless steel frets put in because this is a guitar I'm never going to sell. So there you have it, that's seven out of my 11 electric guitars. I don't own any acoustics. I only have electrics because that's what really motivates me to play. I love being able to plug into an amp and crank it up or even have it go through these studio monitors here through the two notes or just to get some, you know, that guitar wail and blues sound. I love it and I can do that on all of my instruments. You might also notice now I don't have any real double ups apart from the Telecaster and that's the way that I like it. My mission has always been to find a guitar that makes me not want to buy another one. And I feel like I'm there with my Strat Telecaster. I love that Gibson with the P90s. The Tokai Love Rock is great. Although maybe at some point I might buy a Gibson if there's one that I can afford mixed with it being far superior to that. But as of right now, I haven't found one other than some high-end custom shop guitars. And I don't really want to spend six or seven grand on one of those. I can't justify that whatsoever as I'm not a you know working professional anymore. I still do gigs, but you know, the way everything is right now, I'm not doing any or much live playing whatsoever. So that's it. There's four more in the cupboard and I'll save that for another video coming up about why, what I kept and why. So anyway, thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions about any of the stuff you've seen in this video, let us know. Links to everything will be in the description below. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya. There we go.